seat back down. Put the seat back down. And we are back at 1-800-737-2474. And joining us in the On the House hotline is Steve Gottlieb, author of one heck of a fun book. It's called Flush. It's in paperback. It's uh, not a giant size book, but it has giant size information and absolutely fantastic photography. Amazing. And you open the cover, and the fir- first thing you see on the right-hand side of the first inside page is a tank up near the ceiling and a stool at the bottom with a solid wood cover to keep the smell out, I guess. <laughs> Tell us about uh, this book, Stephen. Stephen and... Gottlieb, welcome to On the House. Yeah, welcome. Uh, very good to be here. Very good to be here. Uh, the idea for the book came to me about three years ago. I do a lot of traveling, and I've taken occasional pictures of bathrooms here and there. It was never a particular interest of mine, but one evening I put a half a dozen of those bathroom pictures that I'd taken over many, many years in a slideshow. And the reaction from the audience I was speaking to was audible. You know, you, you could hear a little gasping, a little laughing. And I stopped right in the middle of the slideshow, which, which I don't usually do, and I said, well, it's quite a reaction, you know. It kind of gets me to thinking, I wonder if, if, if I should do a book on this subject. I want a show of hands. How many, if I did a book like, you know, <laughs> similar to the pictures you just saw, how many people would buy the book? And like half the hands went up. Wow. And I said, my goodness, I wonder if anyone's done this. Well, maybe I'll do it. And I went home that evening and I went on to Amazon. This is one of the great things about the Internet. And you can plug in every conceivable keyword and nobody had ever done a serious kind of photographic book. It's serious but fun, you know, as you can see from looking at the pictures and reading the text. And so I was on my way, and it's been a great adventure, and the book has just been out now for a few weeks, and I'm delighted to be talking about it. This is really interesting. We wonder why the tanks that uh, were mounted near the ceiling ultimately went away. And the reason they went away was because toilet engineers found out that siphons work as well at throwing water down the waistline as having a tank way up in the ceiling uh, that would create enough pressure to cause a flush. So I think that's, I think it's really interesting that uh, I had to look at your book and know what I know now about toilets to finally realize that that was the case. How did you find out about all the different things that were used as toilet paper? (laughs) Well, you know, you, I just did research and talked to people. There's a lot of information available. I don't profess to be, you know, some kind of expert, but I have found out in the process of doing the book, talking about it, I, I give a lot of talks to different groups, just the intense interest in bathrooms and in such things as toilet paper. And I know you had a segment where you, you asked about, you know, over and under. Over or under for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm an under. You're an under. And, okay. And I was stunned to find out that I'm in like this very relatively small minority. And I'm scratching my head. It's like under is the way, folks. Why are you all like with over? But yeah. there it is. I, I say at least 70%. And I have, I have surveyed hundreds of people. But what most surprised me is not that 70% do it the wrong way, you see, <laughs> since I'm an under guy. It's, it's how strong the feelings are about it. I, I never would have imagined. Yeah, we've uh, been surveying people for three hours now, and we found out that 20% of the people would change the role if it were the wrong way. Uh, we found out that 70% of the people like it over and 30% like it under. Uh, we found out that there's actually a toilet paper fixture that reverses you know you can really turn it upside down that. yeah but i am just amazed at the gorgeous stunning beautiful photography that you did of outhouses the reason i have those particular outhouse pictures is the outhouse has real quality and character it's a kind of these are quintessential outhouses and then the background says something about the setting, 
in a way that, that creates atmosphere. So those are for the exterior. So, you know, I have one in South Dakota, and one of the, uh, the things in South Dakota is you're out there in the open plains, and, and the outhouse can be one of the tallest structures, you know, within miles. You know, it's just flat as a pancake, so you get that impression when you, when you see that picture. Another picture I did is in one of America's great ghost towns in the eastern Sierra Nevada, uh, and in the town of Bodie, California, and there the outhouse is just about ready to collapse, and they have not put any support to uh, to keep it. Um, I'm going back there this year, and and my guess is that outhouse is long gone. It's probably collapsed, but you get a sense of the mountainous and snowy terrain of the Sierra Nevada. So I enjoyed getting that atmosphere, and then for interior outhouses, the one that really grabbed me that's prominently featured in the book. Uh, was the it's a a replica a replica of the original uh, outhouse at Mount Vernon where George we, Washington lived. We got to take a break, Steve. Hold okay. on, we'll be back with more of Steve Gottlieb and Flush as on the house continues right after this. Nice. And we are back at 1-800-737-2474 with Steve Gottlieb. He is the author of Flush. Steve? Yes? Tell me something. What do you do with an outhouse when it's full? You have to lift it up and move it. Oh, and you then, take it and move it. And, and then you have to be careful. You don't want people stepping where the old outhouse was. So it's a good idea to put some boards over the old filled area because you don't want to have an accident. Ah. And that would be good. This is the first book that I ever saw that begins on page four or five with uh, yellow snow. And I You're asked, talking about my self-portrait. Yes. <laughs> yep, that would be oh. that would be my very own waste product in the snow. Um in uh, uh, more or less my backyard, had a very nice area of snow, and I thought I would do what people did before there were, even before there were outhouses, and I've, we still do today when we're out there bathroom. and there's yeah. no bathroom. Yeah, yellow snow, boy, I tell you, it's the first time I ever saw somebody else's yellow snow. I literally learned about why a chamber pot existed, and you, in your book you say that the chamber pot existed because um, people didn't want to run out to the outhouse in five degree weather and 18 inches of snow. So they had a chamber pot in the house. Exactly. And, oh boy. I tell you, it just never occurred to me. If you have an outhouse, you just go to the outhouse, right? But you don't, it has to be far away from the house. It has to be downwind of the house. And in the winter time, that can be a real mess. And it doesn't occur to me because I'm a California guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. right. Well, you always have good weather. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So rain and snow and, and darkness. Ah. Uh, sometimes there would be a string, I think, that would go from the house to the outhouse. So in the complete darkness, of course, there would be no lights uh, way back when. You know, you could hold on to the string and that would lead you to the outhouse. But there were a lot of nights you didn't want to do it. Of course, then you would have the problem of of the odor in the chamber pot. So they would put tops on them or they would put the chamber pot into something that frequently mimicked furniture. So yeah. it looked like it was a regular chair or something like that. Or in, in the case of, in the book, I have some steps that, that you can step up to your bed when the bed was very high and the chamber pot, it was buried in this little set of steps. That's interesting. Listen, Stephen Gottlieb, you are just an amazing wow. guy. I very rarely have authors on the program but I just had to have you on. This is a great book. Good there is luck so to much you. in this book. We could spend a whole hour how talking to, about Yeah, this. we could spend a whole hour on this. How do uh, our listeners get a copy of your book? Well, the simplest way, go onto Amazon and put in Flush plus my last name, Gottlieb, G-O-T-T-L-I-E-B. And you can get it that way. Or if you can track me down, Gottliebphoto.com. And I can uh, I can help you out, Steve Gottlieb. Thanks for being with us, and uh, good luck to you on your book. 
Well, thanks very much. Thanks for having all right. me. Happy Bye-bye. flushing, Steve. Happy flushing. <laughs> yes, and to you too. And <laughs> all to right. all your listeners. All right. Good Thank you. I know.